Coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to a brand new tutorial series. So let's go. So in this tutorial series we are going to be developing an RPG from ground up using C sharp and mono game. So what what this means is that we're going to be using XNA 4.0 to develop the code and when it comes at a workable state, what we're going to do is we're going to port it from XNA to Mono Games so we can port it to Linux, Windows 8, Windows Phone, Ouya, Android, whatever console you want to distribute it to that, menu, that Mono Game supports, even iOS. So... Uh, this tutorial series is going to be really fun. We're going to develop a tile map editor from ground up. I've never developed a tile map editor in years, so it's a learning experience for me as well. But I hope you guys really enjoy this tutorial series. I hope you gain a lot from it. And I'm going to be trying to explain everything as simple as I can. Now, note that this is... Uh, I'm going to try to and make it as beginner friendly as possible, but there is a level of knowledge of C Sharp that you should know. You should have a good working knowledge of C Sharp and you should have a good working knowledge of X and A. If you don't have a working knowledge of either or, then you can always watch my tutorial series and if you want if you want to learn about XNA, then you can always watch my tutorial series on XNA. So now let us get right into it. Enough talking. Let us finally start our, our first RPG project. And I hope you guys are excited because it's going to be really fun. Okay, so what we want to do is remember we're going to be using an XNA project. So we want to select Windows Game. And I'm just going to call this YouTube RPG. So, uh... I'm just gonna say no there okay so we already know what this stuff does so we're gonna forget about that and we're gonna be adding in uh, three or actually one class right now just not to confuse us and we're gonna be adding in a few namespaces so we're gonna add the default namespace we're gonna add in the content namespace and last but not least, we're going to add in the graphics namespace. So what the screen manager is going to do, the screen manager is going to be used to manage all our screens. So it's going to load everything we need on our current screen. It's going to unload everything on the current screen. It's going to update everything on our current screen. And it's going to draw everything. Now, for some people, you guys are like, what is a screen manager? What does it do? What is its ultimate purpose? And I'm going to explain to you its ultimate purpose. So be ready to be mesmerized or whatever. Anyways, so the screen manager everything is going to be divided up into screens if you notice whenever uh, you play a game and you insert a game let's say call of duty or whatever you'll see uh, a splash screen of different uh companies that have helped like you'll see like treyarch or i don't know if activision does anything or you'll see like some activision or something else I, I don't know all the game companies out there i'm sorry but basically you will see um, all the companies or whatever who, who had a part in it and that is called a splash screen and after that you'll go to an, like the title screen and then after that you'll go into the gameplay screen if you have options you have an option screen if you have they have credits to show it's a credit screen and there's a bunch of different screens that make up this one huge game and so what we're going to do is we're going to divide up our game into a bunch of different screens. And that is ultimately going to give us the perfect object-oriented programming experience. I shouldn't say perfect. There's alternate ways to go about it. There might be better ways, maybe worse ways. But this is a very efficient, effective way to go about it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start off by creating a load content method. Now, as you can probably guess, the load content method loads in content. Simple enough. So what this method is going to be used for is to load in game content from the, from the 
content section such as sprites such as images uh, certain things like that and we'll get more in depth into that later secondly we will have a unload content method this will unload everything when we don't need it okay simple enough the reason why we have it on low content is that we don't want to if we if we're on a current screen let's say we're on the title screen and we're done with the splash screen why do we still need the splash screen elements in memory it makes no sense whatsoever it's using up space on the hardware which it doesn't need to use up so we can free it on our own even though c sharp is an object oriented language sometimes sometimes we have to free stuff on our own and what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, update method which is going to update game elements i'm pretty sure that's self explanatory and we are going to make a draw method and this draw method is going to draw everything to the screen again this is self explanatory now before I end this tutorial we want the screen manager class to be what is known as a singleton class now a singleton class is called a singleton because we want to have a single instance of the class so a singleton is sort of like a static class but it's, it is more efficient now if you search up singleton classes on google uh, you'll see a lot of people bashing it now singletons can have a lot of negatives if you don't know how to use it properly but if you use it in the correct fashion it can have a lot of advantages and you'll see a lot of the advantages in just a moment so what we're going to do is we're going to make a public static screen manager instance and we're going to make a property called screen manager we're going to call it instance sorry and it's going to have a get accessor a no set accessor and in here we're going to say that if instance is equal to no then instance is equal to a screen manager instance else or there's no else sorry otherwise we will return the instance so what is go oh sorry this should be new sorry so what's gonna happen is we're gonna access all of these methods through this instance property so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the instance property if there's no if nothing is created for this yet then it's gonna create a new screen manager instance otherwise it's still just gonna return the instance and therefore we can do various things and this might confuse you so I'm gonna show you this in action right now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a vector 2 called dimensions and I want to make it uh, we'll make it a private set and a public get okay and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our game onecs so we have a load content unload content update and draw just like these methods here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a call to screen manager dot instance dot load content pass in the content manager now you see how easy it is it's kind of like it's global it's kind of like a static class but it has its uses so we we're gonna say screen manager dot instance dot unload content and we're gonna we're calling screen manager dot instance dot update and last but not least we're calling screen manager dot instance dot draw so what is what is this doing when we call screen manager dot instance remember that our instance our instance property is static so we can call it like that so when we call screen manager dot instance it's gonna return this right and what instance is it's a instance of our screen manager so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be able to call load content load content basically anything that is public so that is essentially how it's working now before this tutorial ends we're gonna make a call to screen manager no actually yeah what we're gonna do is we're going to make our our constructor and in our constructor we are going to set dimensions 
equal to whatever screen size we want it. Now, I believe by default it is 640 by 480, but we still want to set it like this because there's other things later on in our code which is going to depend on the width and height of the screen itself. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say graphics in the initialize method. We're going to say graphics dot preferred backward for width is equal to int screen manager dot instance dot dimensions dot x graphics dot preferred backward buffer height is going to be equal to screen manager dot instance dot dimensions dot y and then we're going to say graphics dot apply changes so since we change the screens width and height i'm not sure if we changed it or not but just to be on the safe side this is going to change the screen width and the height to whatever width and height that we specify so uh, that is it for this tutorial. Nothing is going to change in the game window, but I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. And in the next tutorial, we're going to get something up and running. So don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And bye for now.